Has someone knocked on your door offering big savings on your power bill if you sign up for Community Solar? It's an enticing offer, right? But what exactly is Community Solar? That's what we're going to dive into today. This is Main Explained. I'm Robbie Feinberg. I've talked to experts, I've read documents, I've even signed up for a community solar farm myself. All to try to answer three basic questions. What is community solar? What do you need to think about when deciding whether to sign up for it? And what does the future of this program look like here in Maine? Solar panels seem to be everywhere lately. On roofs, on fields, even on the side of the highway. And they're definitely getting a lot of attention. Solar power is increasingly popular, and it's seen as a part of a renewable energy future. So if you want to go solar, there are a few options. You can buy panels for your house, or you can buy a share in a solar farm that's being built. But if you don't have the money up front, or you don't want to take out a loan, there is another option. Subscribe to a community solar farm. In 2019, the state expanded its program that lets people offset their excess power back to the grid. The result? a huge expansion of these community solar farms. In a nutshell, a solar company seeks out subscribers, cue the door knocking. You don't pay anything up front, and your monthly bill helps to fund the farm, and you get some of the credit back for your power produced on your electric bill. Solar advocates say it's a model that's appealing for people who may live in an apartment or who don't have the upfront money for rooftop solar. It is um, nationally the way that most of the solar benefiting lower income uh, customers is being built. And so it's a really important part of, um, of serving that broader community. And many companies are now offering community solar subscriptions, touting 10 or 15 percent savings on your energy bill. But will community solar actually save you money? And how do you figure out which company to pick? I talked to Maine's public advocate Bill Harwood to get some advice. First, he says find a reputable developer. You should check their history and whether they've got a good record of building solar farms here in Maine. Second, read the fine print of your contract. And third? And if you don't understand the language, find someone, call our office, find an attorney, somebody, to make sure you have a pretty good sense of what your responsibilities are. Harwood's final piece of advice? Take a look at your electric bill and make sure you'll actually use all of the electricity that you're paying for. He says if you're going to be away from your house for part of the year, and maybe you're not using much power then, you could end up paying for a lot of solar energy that you don't actually use. And you will end up having to pay the solar developer as if you used it, but you will actually be worse off than if you had never signed up for the program. On a personal note, I actually just signed up for a community solar farm, and I do have a few pieces of advice. First, you should be prepared for some complicated paperwork. When I signed up, I actually had to give my username and my password to the solar company, which felt very strange. Second, you should also know that it could take a long time before you start to save money. I signed up in April of 2023, and I soon learned that my solar farm wasn't expected to go live for more than a year. I'm just one person using one company, but that was certainly an eye-opening experience. And if all of this seems a bit too much, you would be in good company. Only about 40,000 Maine households are estimated to have signed up for community solar so far. And beyond all these questions about how to subscribe, an even bigger question is hanging over the program. How might community solar change in the future? This year, Maine's public advocate Bill Harwood has been calling for big changes to Maine's program. He says the way the program currently works gives big incentives to solar developers, which could lead to much higher electric bills for Mainers. He's also critical that the program has mostly only benefited higher-income communities so far. The issue has led to a lot of fighting in the legislature over this program. Two dueling bills were proposed, with one that could have drastically cut back on community solar and similar programs. But by the end of this summer's legislative session, the Democratic majority ultimately passed an alternative bill that's backed by the solar industry. The new measures place some limits on community solar and also require state regulators to estimate the costs and the benefits of these programs. So what does all of this mean for the program moving forward? Well, first, it means community solar program isn't going away anytime soon. That means you should still be able to find a company and sign up for a community solar share if you want to. 
and there will likely be a lot more scrutiny on Maine's community solar industry in the future. For now, that's Community Solar Explained. Like this video if you learned something new about Maine, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for even more from Maine Public. As Maine's official public media organization, we're proud to bring free radio, television, and digital news and entertainment to Mainers every day. Support our work at mainepublic.org slash donate.